Lego on the line, I think that's that's probably right. Uh, Moggy, that's a clock. That bell ringing. Get around this corner. several times now and I've never had anything to rail on that bit of track. If you ever want to test anything, stream it live. No changes to this scenario, it worked perfectly. There. Great sound decoder. <laughs> it's a DTG sound decoder. The, uh, you got the pump car. Nice apple. Alright, I'll try coming up this hill a bit slower. See if we can get out of the tunnel this time. The common cause of problems like that on the real railway is um, couplings that fall to pieces. Uh, you know the little hook that keeps they keep popping off, and you don't even realise it because there's two on a train. at the top of the hill and we'll turn around left. Oh there's a big bump there that's why. Oh, I'll pass that on the field to have a look at as well. There's a massive bump at the top of that hill.
Right, so in that case, we can carry on our journey. So Phil's, one of the things Phil's captured really nicely is some of the other adva of sort of the non-obvious um, operational possibilities. So here I'm coming up um, upbound and I'm going into uh, platform three rather than uh, platform one um, by crossing over here. Now at the moment there's a problem whereby none of the platforms actually work as platforms, so I won't bother stopping. We're on the surface of the layout now. Get my mouse pad back, there we go. Keeps getting stuck on the table. And then this crosses us back over from Gimli 3 um, to being back on the correct line for uh, heading north again. Uh, Francois, everything, this is actually standard gauge on this, um, uh, on this route. It's, um, it's just enormous. Yeah, so all the buildings are, are sort of normal buildings and things uh, from the... Um, uh, from other routes, same as the signal. So there's nothing small, this is the normal peppercorns, so there's not a shrunk down peppercorn. Uh, so, does Dad had a go yet? No, he hasn't had a go, but he has had a look. He's going to have another look later on. He's busy cooking dinner at the moment. I'm going to run it slow because we're about to hit another grade change again. You mean in real life? Yes, um, I'll, I'll put some link. The, can someone go and find the YouTube link for the um, for the OM Rail channel on YouTube? You can see all the videos from the real railway. So at this point, because we're carrying on up, we take the left junction here. If we were going to go to the terminus, we carry on going straight. back up again. Mr. Trainco, I don't know, uh, you can't buy them on Steam, um, well you can if you look for them, they're there. Um, the preference is for marketplaces to buy it through the in-game store. Uh, Josh, as you say, I'm not allowed to talk about unreleased or unannounced DTG stuff. Tons of scenery around this area. There is the uh, terminus, we'll be there in a little while. Train slow down. We're going to be hitting the, the ridge at the minute. So we're coming up on level eight now for Cameron Station. Yeah, the scenic work is stunning, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. Generally 
over the top there. I shall be networking all the stations because at the moment the markers don't work anyway. They don't work for me on this train. Anyway. This route's on Steam Workshop now, you can go and get it now if you want to have a look at it yourself. Bus station down there. More houses. That's where we were a minute ago, down there. Yes, we are going to try and do a stream on the OMR X shooter. So this is Cameron Station coming up to now, with the bay platform in front. We're going to carry on on the through line. Apple long station. So on this, I think um, Phil has set these up to be suitable for eight-car trains. Um, on the real one, it's um, loco and six. So in the real one, this is all undercover under the village, so what Phil's done is actually put the village out there. And then here is where someone actually sits in the real railway. They sit uh, down under here and they've got a computer under here and they can watch the trains running around, although not very visible here, they're actually, because the trains are all behind these wooden bars here. Um, but yeah, you would normally be sitting here, underground, undercover, sitting in a deck chair, falling asleep, I mean, um, uh, using the computer. Not falling asleep at all. Right. So now we're going to take the inner line. Uh, Josh, I can't remember what this requires. Uh, you can find out if you go onto Steam. Maybe someone can post a link onto Steam. I mean, the most predominant thing it requires is Holiday Express and Riviera in the 50s. I can't remember what else it requires though. Dave, OMR can't go on Twitch. I did email Twitch and find out that uh, they won't take they won't uh, take it as content. So uh, OMR is on Hitbox. So it's hitbox.tv forward slash OMR. So you can see the other two layers down here. So there's four tracks there and there's four tracks underneath. This is uh, 
some, and this is the others. So this is level four, this is level zero. I thought this railway, in the real one, has been built up over, I don't know, 15 years? It, it's, uh, it's been a long time building. Started in 99, apparently. Yeah, sure, BNSF, you can see the map. As I say, there's three layers, so it looks very confused on the map. Because everything's overlaying with everything else, like all this lot. They're, uh, they're all on top of each other. about to go downhill again. So I wanted to ease the speed down just to help that transition so we don't have more problems. On the downgrade now. Thank you. I have tea. on a bit going down a steep hill here. Right. Should be off that grade in a minute. There we go, off the grade so I can give it a bit more boot. We're back on the underground again, we're in level 4, hidden. Uh, we come back out to Kimberley, we're going through Kimberley 2, which is the normal down platform. This is the entrance to the storage for the um, trains at the back. So the idea is there's lots of hidden storage for trains, so the trains will run around the visible bit and then occasionally one will disappear off out the back and a different one comes out the other side. So the, the uh, you can store, I think, um, for a 12 on the bottom layer, I think probably 10 on the level 4, so that's... 20, 22 trains 
um, stored just on this back. You can store about another six or seven in level eight. You can store another three or four, probably um, down on level zero um, in the three the three way split. So you've got storage for probably thirty or forty locos or full trains. These are full six seven car trains, um, and. Um, Oh look, he's built the radio into the uh, into the side here. Look, clever. I didn't even spot that before. He's built the railway the radio into here, so that it looks like a control panel. That's awesome. <laughs> the Southern four five eight slash eight. I'm a fan. I like that one. That's a nice one. I like that. Uh, Apple, everything is electronic. Uh, all the switches, all the signals are all electronic. It's all computer controlled. It's even um, networked multiplayer full control. Um, so uh, quite often we've got um, somebody else um, in Bristol uh, who logs in here is easily confused. Um, he, um, he will log in remotely from his home and operate all of the points and switches. Uh, he's got multiple cameras that he uses to actually work out what's going on um, and he can um, operate all the points, he can even drive a train remotely while we drive trains um, sitting in the shed. It's, um, it's a custom system that I've built um, for doing the um, remote, all, all the train control stuff. Um, Dad did all the electronics for operating all of the points and switches through all the junctions and the signals and um, that then goes back to a Raspberry Pi uh, and then my software sits and runs on the Raspberry Pi and then there's just these big graphical user interfaces um, so we're heading back down to level zero we're not far from finish now we're going to run one round one run round level zero um, and then we're uh, we're going to be uh, then we're going to head into Victoria is the final part of this route. As I said, this is one of the longest single journeys you can do on the railway. Several massive track circuit boards. Do you mean like the, the touch things? It's all done via, um, via computer screens. You just um, click on it. And it's done using the, the real one is done using entry exit signaling so you don't even operate the points you just click on a signal click on the other signal it sets all the signals up and locks the route um, as per the real thing uh, and it means that it's also it's also essentially multiplayer so if you've got multiple people with dispatching roles because you can have as many people as you want running dispatch and um, if someone else locks a route then it shows up as locked by someone else actually on your panel so you can even have multiple people signalling in the same area without conflicting with each other right so this is what we came out before and crossed over we're just going to run round this time Uh, Katie, yes, someone did post the. Um, there's a there's a command now to get stuff on the, the. There is a YouTube channel with several videos that I've put together of the uh, the one house model railway. There's not a lot showing the software. How do I know what to send to the layout? Um, so it's all in, it's all controlled via DCC, um, digital command control, which is a standard. There's a computer interface that plugs into the um, computer, and then there's a the DCC system, or the, the lens DCC system that we use, it tells us if you want to make a train go a different speed, then you send these things. And lens provide full documentation on it, as do NCE and some of the other ones. So the software will actually support multiple systems simultaneously. So while you're driving a lens system, it can also then operate a different system. And in fact, in this case, while the locos are all operated with DCC, the points and signals are operated with the proprietary system that Dad built. 
So um, it's running multiple systems even now um, concurrently. Uh, and you just tell it when you say that signal is a is a an OMR signal, maybe that one's a DCC signal, and it'll just figure out what messages to send. Exhuter, depending on where you are, I don't know who your local. I mean, Roco might be one of the ones that are near you, um, that are more relevant for where you are. Um, Lens is quite expensive kit. I will say that. It's good, but it's quite expensive. There are certainly cheaper options. The NCE one is very good. Um, there are also some ex more expensive ones. Digitrax is quite popular. Um, right, we'll take it easy up this hill again. It would be a shame to derail right at the end. Now, there is a slight signalling glitch on the route at the moment. Mr. Traincow, show the route in operation. Do you mean the, um, the railway? We show the railway quite regularly on Twitch. Well, not regularly enough, but we do show it. You have a local connected to that which is detected as lens. Okay, yeah, in that case, if you look at the um, lens um, site, they've got the documentation. It's a big PDF file. Um, and uh, you connect to it via serial interface. Even the USB one creates a virtual serial interface. Um, and then you just send it strings, little strings of bytes, just basically. Uh, um, and they're, they're almost identical to DCC messages. They're wrapped a little bit. Francois, how expensive is it to build a model railway? It depends what you want to do. I mean, this is going to cost you a lot of money to build, whereas um, a loop of track and some stations not going to cost you very much at all. And then it's anywhere in between. Gently over the bump. I think that's right, Cop Now The key thing is you rarely buy everything up front. You almost always buy it as you get it, as you go. The other thing you can have a look at X shooters if you download JMRI, it's got a um, like a snooper, so you can um, you can see what messages it's actually sending while you operate the layout and so forth using JMRI. So that'll give you an idea of what you're looking for but then the PDF will actually give you details. If you have any trouble finding it, let me know and I'll send you a copy because I've got it on my hard drive somewhere. Right, so we're coming back into Kimberley 3 this time we're coming, sorry, this time we're going into Kimberley 1, not Kimberley 3. We crossed over last time. So we're going back into Kimberley 3. O scale's nice, isn't it, MTS Pilot? But yeah, it is incredibly big. I realised it says Hamish down here. <laughs> if you can make a program that translates the location of your train to a train on your real, the location of your train to a train on your real there. Oh, you mean actually drives the train on the layout as you drive around it in the game. <laughs> Etheria could have it read the controls from the game and operate the the, um, the controls in the uh, on the model railway and then you just have to calibrate it. Right, so this time we're coming round here. We came back across here last time. <coughs> or the opposite, yes, got pop on now, that would work as well. Um, 
This time, though, we're not going to make the journey up to Cameron. We're going to keep going straight. There's tons of possibility for scenarios on this. There's loads of operational stuff going on. <coughs> right, so this time we're going to take the straight line and this will take us into Victoria Station. Just found the Hornby train set you had as a king. Wow. <laughs> That's it. You'll be into a new whole new hobby now then, Moggy. <coughs> right, so we went up there last time. We're coming along here this time. Quite a busy side of the route, you've got loads of tracks over on this side of the route going up and down. Nothing wrong with driving an American train on this route, Amtrak, we do quite frequently in fact. Um, this the the real railway is um, is not intended to be British. It's intended to be a place to run trains, um, and there is uh, yeah, there's no room for train snobbery. <laughs> trains are trains, right? So we're just slowing down now. So this is the approach now into Victoria Station ahead of us, and then you've got all loco sidings. Um, the turntable, freight yards here, loco siding and services over there. You've got the good sidings over here. These are the stabling lines. The idea is your train would come in, uncouple, revert. Alright, we're back again. Sorry about that, folks. And that's it. That's the end of that route. So, let me just give you a bit more of a tour around here. So you've got... Um, Platforms 4 and 5 here, platform 1, 2 and 3 here, stabling A and B there, and then you've got um, storage sidings and all sorts of good stuff going on over here, um, loco servicing as I said, there you go. This is quite neat actually, there's some nice scenes going on over here, and uh, He's been using the scale tool to good effect. I thought this was quite clever when I saw it. The, uh, the scenery round the back. Couple up about the uh, the the uh, real railway model railway does have the Fowler car system round the outside. essentially on the equivalent of uh, this bit.
There you go. So that that's that one. Um, I'm hoping we can do some more with this route in the fullness of time. Um, as I say, Phil is uh, up going to update it with some more uh, um, bits because there's, there's stuff that's not finished yet, like clutter and so forth on platforms. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah. There you go then. So that is uh, One Else Model Railway by uh, PJT 1974. Uh, he's done an absolutely fantastic job of capturing the route. There's so many little details all over the place, which is sort of, you know, absolutely what a model railway is all about. Right, okay, let me um, go back to uh, changing route.